In the last video, we created a beaver for our game with object-oriented design, and in this video, we're going to make a nice background and environment for our beaver. This game we call Hoppy Beaver is a classic 2D side-scroller. That means that we're looking at it side-on, and the character is just moving forwards or backwards through it. We always want our character in the center of the screen, however, so actually, we simulate apparent motion of the character by moving the background behind the character. It's a trick, but it works. To start off, let's draw the parts that won't show any motion, like the blue sky and brown ground. So here I'm going to replace the white background with my own. It's going to be a slight blue hint. And then down here I'm going to create a fill command for the dirt or ground, and a rectangle at zero, and its Y position will be actually 90% of the height, or 360. And then width and height. The height of this, of this rectangle will be only 10% of the canvas height, or, or 40. And there we go. So now, to create the side-scrolling appearance, let's add grass using the grass image from the image library. One way we could create that moving environment would be to pretend our canvas was 30 or was 3,000 pixels wide, and that's how wide our level was. And draw the grass blocks to fit those 3,000 pixels, moving them over to the left each time. However, that's not very efficient. And in programming games, we tend to care a lot about efficiency. Instead, we're going to tile and snake the grass images. We'll just draw as many as we need to go across the 400 pixel wide screen and then when one falls off on the left side of the screen we'll immediately stick it back on the right side of the screen and just continue doing that forever. To do that we'll start by initializing an array of our initial positions for the grass blocks. So I already have a array that's defined here called grass X's and under here I'm going to create a for loop it's going to fill the grass X's array with the values. So it's going to be less than 25. That's how many values we need. And you know the drill. We, def we just finish it all up. And then grass X's dot push I times 20. So if let's say I in this loop equal 2, it would then push I times 20 or 40 into the grass X's array and it's going to have 25 values ranging from 0 to 450. So inside of our draw loop we'll draw each of these grass blocks right here in a new for loop and i is going to be less than grass x's.link which is 25 Oops, and close it and then in here we're going to draw a grass block image now, there's that scroll glitch again, but no problem. There we go. And now the X position will be grass X's I, and the Y position will be the will be about 85% of height, so 0.85, and 20 wide, 20 tall. Okay, great. Looks good. It's just not moving yet. So, what we can do is subtract one from each grass position each time, moving them to the left one pixel. So here I'm going to get grass x's i and subtract one from it. Or just use minus minus. There we go, it's moving. But eventually it's going to disappear off the screen as the x values become more and more negative. To fix that, we'll, st we'll check if grass is sufficiently off screen and set the X position to the canvas width, if so. Remember that our images are drawn from the upper left corner. So here is a new condition. If grass X's is less than or equal to 20, I'm going to set, oops, I need to add an I in there since I'm checking each. And then I'm going to do the same thing here and set it to width. There we go. And of course restart. Sometimes that breaks. Wait, what happened? Oh, negative 20, not 20. Remember, we want blocks to go 
off screen before they're moved. And yes, it looks perfect. And then if I move the hopper around, looks like she's flying in a moving environment. It's like magic. Okay, so we have a beaver hopping through a side scrolling environment, but there's nothing for the beaver to do there. We need to add the sticks for the beaver to hop up and collect. There are many ways we could program our sticks, but they seem sufficiently complex, so let's model them with an object, like we modeled our beaver character. I'm going to start that right here. I'm going to define a new stick constructor equals function, give it x and y arguments, and then here, you just set up the constructor like we normally do. And then I'm going to give it a new prototype called draw. Okay, there we go, and now I'm going to create uh, draw the sticks with 89710 color and a rectangle at this dot x, this dot y, 5 wide, 40 tall. And then before our game starts running, like after we initialize our beaver, let's create an array of 40 sticks with constant offset and random y positions. So right here I'm going to define sticks as an empty array and below here I'm going to uh, set up a for loop i is less than 40 this is going to draw 40 sticks and here I'm going to push new values to the sticks array push oops misspelled new stick I'm going to set it to y equal to i times 40 so they're all 40 apart, and I'm going to add 350 so that the first stick starts 350 pixels to the right. And then the Y positions can be 20 and 260, or between those values. And of course close. And then in the draw function, we're going to create one more loop to then draw all the sticks. I is less than sticks.length which is now 40 and in here I'm going to draw all the sticks and I'm now going to move them as well oh and remember we're moving the X position of this object so we could do minus equals 1 or minus minus like before and there we go we have sticks that are now being drawn and being moved in the air but obviously we're not able to pick them up. We will fix that in the next video, so I'll see you then.